episode of Drunk Anatomy with Alex, this time with beer. If you're concerned that you keep saying the same beer bottle, keep seeing the same beer bottle in all my episodes, don't worry, I'm doing this all on the same day. So, I'm sneaky like that. Anyway, so we were talking about anatomy last time, um, and we've been talking about anatomy in the abdominal cavity. Now, what is the abdominal cavity? Because I mentioned before we have the thoracic cavity, the abdominal cavity, and the pelvic cavity. But where does one start and where does the other end? Well, these are all nifty little things that we need to know. They're really, really important. Being sarcastic, but actually it is really important because later on you are going to want to know where is what as you're palpating from the outside of the animal, you, as you're feeling along there, you need to know what it is you're touching. I mean, you can't be like, wow, I can't feel your heartbeat, but you know, you're actually touching the kidneys. That'd be a little impractical, but I digress. So, the uh, abdominal cavity kind of attaches to the caudal end of the uh, thorax. Um, if you if you know the, uh, you have the sternum, the sternum part of the, so where the bones go and the ribs come down and then you have the sternum there. And so on the caudal end of that complex structure is where the thoracic cavity begins. And it moves all the way on to the linea terminalis. Um, the linea terminalis is kind of a misnomer because it's not really a terminal line. Oh no, it's not a line. It's a circle. It's a nifty little circle made up of a whole bunch of different parts. Um, it's made out of the pubic crest, the pectin pubis, the ar arcuate line, margin of alla, and the promontory. So those things together in the pelvic area make up the uh, terminal line. So the th uh, abdominal cavity begins at the caudal end of the thorax and moves along up to that um, terminal line. And that's because there's no actual uh, inner, uh, there's no actual inner separation between the abdominal and the pelvic cavity. It's like this seamless uh, moving forward, whereas in the thoracic and uh, abdominal area, the diaphragm does a pretty good job of kind of creating a sort of barrier and separation between the two. Um, the pelvic cavity, you don't have that. It's just kind of moves, keeps moving along. So we just create an arbitrary line, the terminal line, and say that's kind of where it stops and that's where the pelvic area begins. Um, and then on top of that, we divide them into different um, regions. So we talk about, so when you have the outer abdominal um, area, you further divide that into three regions, the cranial, the medium, and the caudal region. And amongst those regions, you, um, again, have different surface areas to further... What the hell do you call the kinds in, in English? Hmm. It's going to bug me. Oh, well. Um, so yeah, that's the way you kind of like draw, draw your little invisible line so you know where exactly you are in the abdominal cavity from the outside, which is pretty cool, I guess. So, like I said, you have the um, regio abdominis cranialis, regio abdominis medialis, and regio abdominis caudalis. The, um, the cranial version, cranial version... The cranial border. Border! That's the word I'm looking for. The border. You create little borders. Yes. Little borders. So, the cranial region um, borders are um, from the regio xiphoidea. So, you know that processo xiphoidea on the sternal bone, on the sternum? That little um, process? That's one of the um, regional markers to mark the border. And then you have the hypochondriaca, dexta, and zinista. So let's say you have the sternum bone right here. I'm going to draw this. So let's say you have 
an animal. Um, this is the head. Let me draw the head. I'll go give it little ears. And here's its tail. Isn't she pretty? Um, her name is Isabella. Isabella the cat dog with a horse tail. Now, let's say that the thorax is right here, and you have the, the sternal bone, you know, you have the rib cage going down here, and the sternum process is like somewhere here. Um, so this is the one, so this is where we would say the abdominal cavity, let's say this is all the abdominal cavity here, the, and then you have your cranial, your medial, and your caudal. So this is the cranial area, and we're going to create an arbitrary border here through the uh, regioxifoideus, which is named after that little process, uh, sifoidial process. Um, the uh, hypochondriaca dexta and zenista, so left and right on either side, and the um, regiocostalis which are the ribs. So that's that little area right there involving the ribs, the um, hypochondriaca, and the xiphoidia. Then the medial. The medial is where the uh, umbilical um, cord, so the, um, yeah, the belly button area. The belly button area is one of the areas, the regio umbilicalis. Isn't that nice? Sounds like umbilical cord. <laughs> Isn't that convenient? I love it. Um, and then you just have regio abdominalis, lateral and media. Lateral is facing on the outer side, medial is going towards the inner side of the animal. And then you have the uh, fossa paralumbalis, which they call it the so-called hunger groove. I don't know what the hell that means. I just keep hearing people say, oh, right, the hunger groove. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, the hunger groove. What? And I'm too embarrassed to ask. I don't know what the hell it means. I just assume, like, okay, yeah, the hunger groove. Beats the hell out of me what the fuck that is. But that's what it's bordered by, this little fossa paralumbalis. Um, paralumbalis, I mean, lumbal, lumbal region, so, and para means around, so I can guess that this little hunger groove is somewhere in the outer lumbalic region by logic deduction here, in my meager understanding of Latin, but where the hell it actually is, no fucking clue. Just take my word for it that it's there. Um, and then you have the regio lumbalis, which as I said before, is towards the lumbalic region. So that's the medial bordering stuff. Then, moving on to the caudal area of all this, that is um, bordered by the regio pubica, no, regio pub yeah, regio pubica, you know, the pubic area. So where the pubic area starts, if you were to, um, let's say you have a dog and you lie it on its, on its back and you spread the legs, um, and right there, actually, where, um, the, uh, the, when the two stomach, when the stomach comes together, you have this linea iba, which is like the white line on the stomach lining, and it goes in to these canales, um, inguinales, so the ingual channel, which is where the stomach muscles create two rings, um, the superficial and the, uh, uh, profundus. There's a superficial ring and one that's underneath it, there's two rings, and those two rings create a channel. And that's where you would say the pubic area kind of is, and it's before the um, the uh, rest of the pubic organs are. So it's like right on the border there. So that's where we create the border, the uh, uh, regio pubica, and then you have the regio inguinalis sinistra and dexta, which is what I already mentioned. You have that ingual channel, and right there you have where it goes left and right, that's your little region there. And then you have the plica lateralis, which is what they call the uh, the, the knee fold, which is kind of funny because there's no knee there. I don't know why you would call it a knee fold if there isn't a knee there, but here we are. <laughs> why would any of this make sense? I don't know. Nothing makes sense. <laughs> um, and then the regio uberus. 
I don't know what the fuck the Regio Uberus is. No clue. Don't ask me. I just know that that's what it's called. And if asked, I'd say, oh yeah, that's what the region is. It's uh, with the uh, Regio Inguinalis in Estadexa, Regio Publica, and Regio Uberus. Don't ask me to show it to you. I'm begging you. I don't know where it is. So those are the regions. Um, and that's where the actual abdomen is. Then you have the um, cavum abdominis, which is everything on the inside. So like it's everything I just described, the regions, that's the palpable abdomen. So if you're looking at the animal from the outside, these are the regions that you're going to be looking at. Um, and then you have the cavum abdominis, which is everything that's from the inside, of, so internally speaking. Um, and there you just have your typical cranial, caudal, dorsal, ventral, lateral, medial, um, per usual. And um, there you kind of use the, the organs themselves. So the cranial part, uh, for example, is near where the diaphragm is, the esophagus, um, and that foramen vena cave, which is the uh, hole where that big um, vena uh, cave vein the really big vein that's super duper important and it goes through the diaphragm in a little hole, or actually it's a pretty big hole, um, that's where we would say the cranial t uh, part of the abdominal cavity is. Um, and then the caudal tile, a uh, uh, caudal part of the actual abdominal um, cavity is again on the terminal line, just from the inside. Um, and then you also have the cavum peritonea, which is the abdominal lining cavity. I don't really know what that means. I probably should know what that means, but I don't. Um, which, you basically have the stomach lining, which wraps all of the organs and everything, you know, it, it covers all of the organs. Um, and so, in, uh, so that's the, the the peritoneum, which is just the uh, tunica zarosa, which is the tissue that covers it. That's the name of the tissue, tunica zarosa, and just in the abdominal cavity, we call that tunica zarosa the peritoneum. And um, yeah, it just it covers all of the ab abdominal cavity organs. Yep. Actually, pretty much it to the general abdominal cavity like that's how we would um, split it up and that's how you would orient yourself um, if you were to have um, either a patient or um, if you were at the dissection table um, and you were trying to orient yourself and kind of figure out where the organs need to be or where you should be hearing or feeling what um, you, you would kind of create, you would find your little markers, your market areas, um, based on the ribs, like you can feel the rib cage from the outside, you can feel the different process, you can feel the pubic, um, area, and then you would create your little in, in, invisible lines. Um, so, actually pretty useful, pain in the ass to learn, especially when you're learning it in Latin, but... It really is important to pay attention in class, even if it kills you. <clears throat> anyway, that's all I got on this subject. I'm um, going to be moving on to the small and large intestine, you know, their surfaces, how they run, all of that fun stuff, um, the variations amongst different animals, because <laughs> there's not just one small and large intestine you got to learn. No, there's like five different ones because every animal is different. Again. Side-eyeing the human medicine studiers. You guys have it so easy, you don't even know. I hate you a little bit. And then they say vet students aren't real doctors. Please. Alright, that's it. Tune in next week for another fun and family-friendly episode of Drunk Anatomy with Alex.